Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Nitin Noria. I'm the Dean of Harvard Business School. And it's my great privilege to welcome you to the opening of the Paliuka Harvard Life Lab. Uh, for a space that was initially dubbed the wet lab, it's in some ways perhaps auspicious that the weather is what it is today. <laughs> uh, and the forecast drove us inside. Uh, but given that this is New England and it's November, uh, maybe we can take some, some comfort in the fact that it's not snowing. Uh, but I'm delighted to see you all here this afternoon. It's also wonderful to gather in a space uh, where Julia Child uh, first conducted one of her cooking classes. And since cooking is the art of chemistry, uh, in some ways it's very appropriate that we're going to do, we're going to launch a life lab uh, as a part of this iLab system today. Uh, we are honored to have with us uh, many friends, uh, our fearless and wonderful president of Harvard University, uh, Drew Faust, Mayor Marty Walsh, the Harvard Innovation Lab faculty chair Srikant Dathar, Judy and Steve Paliuka, uh, whose support have made this remarkable space possible. I want to welcome as well uh, Judy and Steve's family and special guests, uh, including Joe and Felicia Paliuka, Stephanie Paliuka, uh, former Governor Deval Patrick, Congressman Joe Kennedy, and representatives from what seems to be every Boston landmark organization, uh, from media uh, to our beloved sports teams, uh, to global strategy, to venture capital, to private equity, to consulting. Uh, we have a very brief speaking program planned inside here, and then we're going to ask you, uh, assuming that the weather stays as clear as it is, or if not, to brave the elements uh, for just a few minutes as we will go out and do a ceremonial ribbon cutting to mark the official opening of the Paliuka Harvard Life Lab at the actual facility, which is uh, next door to us. And then after that, we uh, invite you to enjoy a reception back here, uh, as well as self-guided tours of the Life Lab if you wish to uh, see the facility. Please go in and uh, take a look at what uh, this remarkable facility uh, will enable. Uh, almost exactly five years ago, uh, on November 18th, in fact, 2011, uh, we gathered here to celebrate the opening of the Harvard Innovation Lab, and we marveled that we had reached such a moment just a short 13 months after announcing the plans for this building. Uh, now we can look across the street to the Launch Lab, uh, which is a space where alumni who graduate from the Life Lab, uh, from the iLab can work, which opened in 2014. And we are here today to celebrate the opening of this uh, Paliuka Harvard Life Lab, uh, five months only after unveiling the plans for this building, with 17 teams already selected, and some, as of this Tuesday, already in residence. Now, many, many people say that the pace of innovation in academic institutions is somewhere between slow and glacial. Uh, I hope today you believe that there is tangible proof of what can happen when circumstances conspire uh, to enable things to happen in a very positive way. Uh, it's not just circumstances that are conspiring. To go from an idea to the space you see today required the effort of many, many people. So I'd like to acknowledge and thank those who have gotten us to where we are today. Uh, first, uh, my partner in everything that we do at Harvard Business School, uh, Angela Crispy, uh, who runs a uh, all of our operations, uh, everything on the staff side of our business school, who never batted an eye when the idea of the life lab landed on her plate. This is often the role that she has, that deans dream up ideas, and then they say, Angela. <laughs> Jay is right here. My predecessor, Jay Light, is here, is here right here with me. And so he knows exactly how this works. And uh, Angela has done that for deans before him as well, uh, who in an amazing way marshals resources to make projects like this come to life. Uh, we are very blessed to have great partners in Mass Hall, Katie Lapp, our provost, Alan Garber, our president, Drew Faust, who were championing this vision of Alston as an enterprise zone. Uh, they have been open to all of the things that we say to them. They often wonder, why does this business school dean keep coming with ideas that require us to do crazy things? Uh, but we're truly, truly grateful to them for all that they allow us to do. Uh, Mayor Walsh and the city of Boston getting something like this permitted and opened. It's a, it's a facility that requires uh, a wide range of self and health concerns, and so safety issues are paramount, and yet we found a way to do this and meet the city. The city worked with us in a remarkable way to help make this happen. 
Uh, and this is, uh, I think, his vision of seeing uh, what life sciences represent for this city and the enormous possibility that Alston has as another node in this amazingly vibrant ecosystem that is now a part of Harvard from Kendall Square to the waterfront district to what's happening here. So I think we have the opportunity to build an amazing, amazing uh, innovation ecosystem and Mayor Walsh has been deeply supportive of that. Uh, the Dean's Advisory Board uh, for the iLab, which consists of the deans of all of the schools of Harvard. But I want to especially signal, single out Doug Melton, uh, who was uh, perhaps the person who first gave us the idea that there should be something like the Life Lab uh, here at Harvard. And uh, Felicia, who worked with him, then told us, you must do it. Uh, Joe Lassiter uh, and Bill Solomon, my colleagues who have been uh, the champions of entrepreneurship at Harvard and the iLab and have done so much to enable this community to come together here. Srikant Dothar and our Life Lab Selection Committee, uh, Alan Crane, Adam Cohen, George Daly, Mark Fishman, Johannes Fruhav, Jennifer Lewis, and Rick McCulloch for choosing and these 17 amazing inaugural teams with an eye to creating opportunities for innovation. And I want to underline and education because the role of each of these teams is not just to spur innovation, but to be educational partners of the iLab. Uh, the iLab team, uh, led by our fearless uh, Jody Goldstein, will continue to surpass everyone's wildest hopes in engaging students, faculty, alumni, and staff across Harvard. Our operations team, uh, led by Dave Zenga, for working tirelessly to ensure that the execution of these plans has exceeded our highest expectations. I had the opportunity in the last three months to visit labs at Novartis, at Vertex, at Mass General, at Biogen. I wanted to make sure that what we were building was of the same quality. And I think anybody would be proud to work in the Life Lab uh, right next door. So Dave, thank you so much to your team for having pulled this off. And finally, uh, and most importantly, uh, Judy and Steve Paliuka. It was their support that ultimately made this project possible. For many years, uh, they have articulated the opportunity for Alston to become a life sciences cluster. And they have understood the need uh, for a lab space to support Boston as a hub for biotechnology ventures. This truly is an arena in which Boston leads today. And we must have the aspiration to continue to lead into the future. So thank you, Jude, uh, Judy and Steve, for uh, your inspiration and your support to make that happen. Uh, it is now my great privilege uh, to introduce uh, our president, uh, Drew Faust. Drew, as you know, is a historian. And I think that when history will be written many years into the future, we will remember this moment as being an important catalytic moment for the development of Watson. Drew. Thank you, Nathan, for that generous introduction and wonderful words, but thank you also for what you've done to make this moment happen, and I hope you continue to have more of those crazy ideas that have been so generative for all of us at Harvard and in Boston and beyond. It's wonderful to be here with so many people to celebrate the Paliuka Harvard Life Lab and to see individuals not just from the university, but from the Alston Brighton community, from City Hall, and far beyond. Thank you, Mayor Walsh. Thank you, Governor Patrick, and Congressman Kennedy for joining us today and for recognizing always the role that universities play in driving progress here in Massachusetts and across the country. If you want to understand the potential impact of work that will be undertaken in this beautiful new space, you need only consult the roster for our first season. As Nathan said, 17 groups representing eight of Harvard schools will use the Life Lab to put their knowledge into practice for the common good. Their aims are inspiring from faster DNA sequencing and targeted genome editing to better biomaterials, proteins, and vaccines, the list goes on. What will life be like if they succeed? It will be greener thanks to new wastewater technology. It will be longer thanks to new tests for HIV drug adherence and resistance and earlier detection of drug-resistant pathogens. We will prevent dehydration, hearing loss, and cancer-causing viruses. We will identify pancreatic cancer sooner. We will stop tumors from progressing 
and we will treat diseases more effectively with new therapeutics. Life, in short, will be better because of this space and because of the creativity it will spark and the students, faculty, and alumni it will bring together. This future is imaginable, thanks to Judy and Steve Paliuka, whose philanthropy reflects unfailing optimism and a deep commitment to improving the world. Thank you, Judy and Steve. Harvard is shaping our campus for the next century with spaces that encourage collaboration, spur experimentation, and foster connections among boundlessly imaginative and inventive people. This growing innovation neighborhood, already enriched by the iLab and the Launch Lab, has the incomparable Harvard Business School as its foundation and will be strengthened further with the addition of the Harvard Paulson School of Engineering and Applied Sciences. This area will become the heart of an enterprise research campus where higher education and industry intersect in dynamic ways, enabling the, the elation of discovery, the application of research, the translation of good ideas into great progress for humanity. Universities are essential. They push the edges of what is known and they pull remarkable and sometimes world-changing efforts from individuals as they create opportunities for extraordinary collaborations. The Life Lab represents some of our greatest hopes for what Harvard can achieve in the years to come. We are all so pleased today and so very grateful to the Paliukas for envisioning a future in which all roads lead to Alston. Thank you very much. It's now my great pleasure and privilege to introduce my friend, Mayor Martin Walsh. Thank you, President Faust, and um, thank you for hosting us today uh, at the campus of Harvard University. I also want to uh, thank uh, Congressman Joe Kennedy for being here with us today, and, and all of the invited guests uh, that are gonna speak in a few minutes. Uh, I want to give a special shout out to Steve and Judy, and I'll talk about them in a few minutes. And thank you very much uh, for this important um, place of space that so many, so many people, so many things are going to be discovered here. So thank you. I also want to recognize uh, City Council Mark Siomo, uh, who, who represents this neighborhood and is a partner at City Hall. Thank you, Mark, for being here with us. And Kevin Honan, State Representative Kevin Honan, my former colleague in the House. Thank you, Kevin. And uh, Governor, it's good to see you. Uh, you look a lot more relaxed right now than you, you know in the past. I want to thank you for being here, and also uh, for me, Senator Mo Cowan is with us as well. Thank you, uh, Senator, for for being here as well on this exci exciting day. The Paliuga Life Lab is going to open new doors for the students, faculty, scientists, and scholars, and I think that we all know that it's going to give them a plat platform to launch new biotech startups. It's also going to be an engineer for healthcare and the environment. And it's all right here in Alston. And I think that's what really makes this so special. We are in the midst of a tech startup boom in Boston and the Commonwealth. And this beautiful state-of-the-art facility is going to help us even attract much more talent to our great city. Off the bat, the Paleoca Life Lab will host 17 venture teams uh, that's going to have the opportunity to be here. They're going to be developing ways in diagnosing cancer sooner and getting clean water to refugee camps and so much more. So when you think about what's going to happen here and what's going to happen right here in this, in the, on this site, it's remarkable. Another important stat is nearly half of these teams are founded by women. And we should have a clap for that. <laughs> and hopefully that's a sign of things to come in the coming weeks. And it's going to bring... <laughs> Not that I'm getting political or anything. <laughs> but it's going to bring bright minds from all over the world right here to solve some great problems. The work will remind the Bostonians, especially our youth, that we can accomplish great things together. It represents the kind of progress that we're hoping to see throughout the We Boss program, our small business plan. Both of these initiatives are, are, were created to close the wage gap and to support women and people of color 
uh, on the entre entrepreneur companies. We think the innovation in Boston, our thri in our thriving Seaport District, probably comes to mind. The Life Lab is certainly a reminder that people are making incredible progress in sciences all over the city, not just in certain parts of our city. I'm happy to see that the Paleuca Life Lab will join the Austin community and is committed to being a good neighbor. So for several years, it was the dean mentioned the Harvard Ed Portal has connected community members with academic resources. This spring, that, that portal has hosted over 100 Austin Brighton students in enrichment and in biotech programs. This new lab is certainly going to continue that tradition and will add an emphasis on life sciences. Right here, we'll be sponsored science, technology, engineering, and math workshops for our local residents. It also provides a $60,000 grant for Chromebook laptops for the Austin Brighton Public School students. This is the exact the kind of community investment a city wants to see from the private and academic sectors. And that's something that's really important for us that this lab is not just focused on people coming in here. It's focused on getting people from this community and young people from this community to be in here eventually. So Boston is, well, is, is honored to welcome this lab. And I am grateful to Steve and Judy for the generous donations they made and made this possible. And I remember when Steve had a conversation with me about this idea. He was giddy, he was excited, because he knew that it was gonna make a difference in so many different people's lives for so many different reasons. I was just drinking that day. And he was drinking that day. <laughs> Not to mention the Celtics have a ton of first round picks, but other than that. <laughs> but it truly is remarkable when you see somebody from the community make an investment back in the community, an investment that's gonna go on for generations. As the Dean said, Someday, we'll, somebody's going to look back on history on this, in this particular lab and realize all of the great progress that's been made here in the different areas of life sciences. So again, I want to thank you both for your donation and your country, not just donations, more than a donation, for your involvement, investment in our community. And I want to thank you for that. Now I have the honor to introduce my cousin, Shirank Detour. <laughs> Detour, excuse me. Thank you, Cousin uh, Walsh. Uh, <laughs> I would like to add my thanks uh, to Judy and Stephen for this uh, very generous gift. I've had the privilege and pleasure of spending time with them on what they hope this gift will mean to the university, the city of Boston, and the wider community. And I can say today that I'm very confident that we will meet and exceed your already high expectations. Over the last four months, I've had the honor of working with some truly outstanding faculty members and businessmen and the iLab staff to select the first group of scientists and entrepreneurs for the Life Lab. I want to thank Alan Garber and Nitin Noria for their unstinting support, and Adam Cohen, Alan Crane, George Daly, Mark Fishman, Johannes Froehoff, Jennifer Lewis and Rick McCullough for the passion, dedication, and commitment that you all brought to this work. I was trying to reduce the workload for these individuals. I said I'll review some of the applications myself and only send you the ones that we need to really spend time on. But no, they insisted on reviewing every single one of the applications we received and spent many hours interviewing the candidates. Using their deep scientific and business insights, they made many constructive suggestions to the teams, all with the goal of improving the ideas being presented. Many of the teams have commented to me about how valuable those interviews were. Jody Goldstein, Alice Lee, Neil Doyle, and Paige Burke provided fantastic support. What a joy it was to work with all of you. We have selected 17 outstanding teams uh, representing eight Harvard schools and diverse industries, consumer products and devices, diagnostics, therapeutics, vaccines, and biomaterials. Nearly half the women are women founders, and nearly two-thirds are led by our faculty and students. 
we really could not have asked or hoped for a stronger cohort of scientists and entrepreneurs to be the first group of individuals to start at the Life Lab. Drew has already described the uh, wonderful projects that are going to be researched here, and so I won't uh, repeat it here. So the exceptionally talented group, but what is equally important to us is the value and culture they will bring to the Life Lab. They and we are acutely aware that how we interact with each other and what we do will come to define the values and culture of the Life Lab for many years to come. Collectively, we look forward to building a culture of cooperation, of working together, and of thinking imaginatively and creatively about difficult and important problems. Some of the teams have already begun talking to each other about sharing equipment and ideas. They're showing already the generosity of spirit that precisely describes why such collaboration will benefit us all. We want each of our teams to succeed because they're engaged in some truly, truly important work. But we also look forward to their contributions in helping us further the research and educational mission of the university. This was made very clear to them as we interviewed them uh, to become the founding entrepreneurs of the Life Lab. They could share ideas in seminars, engage with students, many different ways. It is our ambition and dream that the Life Lab, as the iLab and the Launch Lab that came before it, will make significant contributions to the university and the city while improving the lives of millions of people. All of us involved in the Life Lab are motivated and dedicated to achieving this goal and to fulfilling our promise to Judy and Steve. So with that, I'd like to introduce uh, Judy Paliuka to say a few words. Thank you very much. Wow, what a great group. Um, I'm just thrilled to be here today for the dedication of the Harvard Life Lab, and I am just so impressed to see uh, uh, Dean Noria and President Faust, Mayor Walsh, Shrikant to come here and you know speak on our behalf and say such nice things about us, as well as this really impressive group of scientists and business people, uh, as well as our friends and other supporters that we have in this audience. It's uh, very um, emotional for me to stand up here in front of all of you people. Um, many people have found out that we've been doing this and you know, prior to this day, and they'd ask, why would we support this endeavor? And where did this passion for science come? And why is this lab adjacent to the Harvard Business School? And the answer lies in uh, two things, uh, tomatoes and planaria, which is a flatworm. So you know, I'm, you know, you've heard all these, you know, I'm not going to use any big words here, all right? So because, you know, because I, I really want to bring this down to an emotional level, there's, when you make a, a donation like this uh, and have this kind of involvement, there's really primitive feelings that, come, um, that spur you to do it. Uh, you know that Steve's Italian and tomatoes are a very important part of uh, the Italian cuisine. Um, but what you probably don't know is that my dad was a tool and die maker and a first gen in the US and really only achieved a high school education, but really was an incredible supporter of education. Uh, he descended from Lithuanian farmers, and as a result, we lived in, um, like even though we lived in a little two family in Chicago, he had a little plot in the backyard where he would plant tomatoes. And when it came time to really put that garden to use, he was not shortchanged short on education. He researched seed types, weather patterns, composting, the best way, benefits of worms, soil aeration, soil chemistry. So really, in um, my experience, the very first teacher in my life was my dad, who taught me all about these scientific ways to grow a, potato, a tomato. And you know a tomato grown that way is the very best tomato that you will ever taste. Now something as simple as a tomato requires research and resources and collaboration to produce it and make it the best it could be. 
So what I learned from him is imagine the resources that are going to be needed to do all the great things that uh, President Faust talked about and that Nori and Shrikant talked about. Just, just imagine those resources. And I'm just hoping this Life Lab will be one of those resources that can help um, push this forward. Um, my dad, as I said, loved science, and science actually returned the favor. In middle age, he contracted rheumatoid arthritis, which is a terrible autoimmune disease and degenerative. But if it wasn't for the entire pipeline of value creation, um, in, from bench research all the way to practical application and go-to-market strategies, he really never would have benefited from some of the great advances they made in treating that disease. Uh, we also have an, um, a niece who had uh, osteosarcoma and recently was able to take advantage of the new immunotherapies that's really saved her life. Um, my second recollection was, and I talked about planaria. So there is another uh, inspiration in my life, and I'm sure you guys could all relate to this, a science teacher or a really amazing teacher in your life. So I had Mr. Erickson, tall, be spectacled, seventh grade, okay, seventh grade science teacher, lanky, happy, l first year as a teacher. So, you yeah, know, no cynicism, just happy guy. <laughs> um, but he, he said we should do a science experiment, so he, he had given us some suggestions, and I wound up with planaria, which is a flatworm, and, you know, given that I had done gardening, worms were not at all, I wasn't afraid of worms. Um, now, these creatures are pretty cool because uh, if you chop off their head, they grow a head. <laughs> if you chop off their head and tail, they grow a head and a tail. And from one, you can get three. And if you split its head, it grows two heads. So you could imagine as a seventh grader in middle school all of the incredible experiments <laughs> <laughs> that you could do with these tiny creatures. And it's fair. You know, it's really cool. But here we are, like, generations later, and would you, I, I researched this for this day, thinking about these planaria. I said, what's going on with these planaria? Well, it turns out they maintain their telomeres over their lifetime, making them effectively immortal, and stem cell scientists to this, at this very day are trying to unlock their secrets to help with regenerative medicine. Um, so the lesson I draw here is that probably we've only scratched the surface of what is possible. And we have a multi-generational responsibility to make sure we push the frontiers of science. So ever since those days, I have followed science. And I'm probably known in my family as being a little uh, maybe talking too long and also talking too much about science. <laughs> But um, my life went in a little different direction and uh, studied business. And now I'm more interested in the, bus the business model of science and how it's funded and how value is created in the pipeline. Uh, right now, you know, federal funding has been declining. And you hear about venture capital and you also hear about philanthropy rising, but it has not really closed the gap. And yet, do you know that there are more talented people studying science than there ever has been? And there's just not enough funding for them to pursue their great ideas. And all these amazing tools that Drew was talking about, um, you, the technologies, CRISPR, the data, the genome. I mean, we live in times in, of incredible potential. So I, I don't know what the juxtaposition of science and business will bring. We really don't know. And that's part of the fun of, like, of doing a, um, an, a, a project like this is you really act on your principles, and you act on a dream, and you try to just be a little part of that dream and push it a little bit forward. We really don't know what's going to happen, but you know, maybe 100 ideas will happen, and maybe only two will work. I don't know. But I'm really hopeful that um, something good will come out of this. Um, so I thank my first teachers in instilling a love of science, and I thank all those people who devote their lives to unlocking the secrets, and I also thank those people who devote their lives to thinking about value creation. Uh, it's a tremendous opportunity to be linked with this endeavor and to aspire to foster collaboration and to leave the world a better place. I wholeheartedly also thank my husband, Steve, for making my inclusion in this day possible. And I know my dad and Mr. Erickson would be very proud that we've all come together to do this. So thank you very much for your time. And with that, I'd like to... Thank you. So, so, so with that, 
I'd like to introduce um, my husband, Steve Paliuka. Well, I didn't know that story about tomatoes, but I guess I'm lucky that you married a tomato <laughs> person. Um, this is quite, quite overwhelming to be here. I, I almost feel like uh, it's probably better than my own funeral. Um, <laughs> My partner, Wick, would probably say I'd probably be lecturing at my own funeral uh, <laughs> going, on, going on too long. Um, I really want to thank all of you for coming. Uh, it, it, it's been incredible support, and that's what we need here in Boston for efforts like this. We're really fortunate to have these leaders in the room. Um, I, I'm not a great politician, so I'm sure I'll miss one of them if I start naming names, but I'll name, name a few names of all, all these people right here, Every, everybody in the whole room uh, <laughs> doing what you're doing. And, and when you step back, uh, leaders like Mayor Walsh, uh, who I've had many conversations with this about, uh, Joe Kennedy, uh, Deval Patrick, who started with the big biotech uh, initiative here, uh, Mo Cowan, who's, who's back there, that, that also promoted this as, 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 a, as, a, as a senator and, and an exemplary person in the community, Dean Noria, President Faust, um, Shrikant, uh, this, the second hardest name to say behind Paliuka. <laughs> But I've got to nail my, uh, we, we have a wide diversity of people here. My roommate from college is, is here, uh, San, Sanjay Saini. Um, the, the, the Celtics family, you know, Wick and, and, and Danny and Mike Zarin. All this couldn't have been possible, you know, with, without the help for all, all these folks. And it's really heartening to me. It's a shining example how the city of Boston and the state of Massachusetts, business people, and our leaders can come together for the common good. And that really is missing today. Uh, many of you are concerned Hopefully you're concerned about the, the state of our elections and what's going on politically with all the partisan, the bickering. And here we are uh, developing such a facility, not because of us, really because of these people, this community, uh, really diving in and making this happen at record speed. I don't think there's any other community that could get this building up and running and 17 businesses up and running in less than two years. I even have a high school classmate here who I wouldn't be here without him because he gave me my first job as a furniture mover which uh, was probably the hardest job of my life. <laughs> and uh, it started out slowly because the, the, the first day in the yard, the, the people came down and they said the, the driver wasn't there. There's was 20 people in the yard and he'll tell you that he was there. And, and I just learned to drive a stick shift from him the day before. <laughs> and the driver wasn't there. There's was 20 people in the yard. And they said, they, and, and many of them were, were, were they, they were reasonably rough people. Um, and they said, who can, who can drive a you know, 10 speed moving van? And I, I saw no hands were going up. I figured it was better to drive than lift furniture, so I raised my hand. <laughs> and fortunately, I got it out a lot alive, and, the, and I was able to pay, pay for college, you know, from having that job, and, uh, and, and ended up uh, going to Duke and Harvard Business School. So I've been very fortunate um, to, to be part, a little part of these big institutions, which I think are much more important than, than me or any one individual. Um, it brings back kind of, kind of the, the, the spirit of what Doc Rivers would call Ubuntu, everyone working together for a great cause. So I really want to thank my partners and friends here, uh, all of our friends, uh, uh, Bain and Company, Bain Capital, the, my partners at Bain Capital, I think Jonathan Levine's here, uh, Ryan Cotton's here. Uh, I know I'm gonna, I'm gonna miss somebody, John Cotton was here. Um, Michael Ward, Kim McCaslin, and, uh, and, and probably someone who will, who will tell me I missed them uh, back at the office, but uh, those are the ones I saw out, out uh, in, in, the in, in, the, uh, in the meeting here. Um, Duke University, Harvard Business School, this really wouldn't be possible without all this collaboration going on, the leadership of the mayor, and Joe Kennedy, who have many discussions with, on biotech with as well. So in conclusion, and we'd love you to get over and see the Life Lab, that's the most important part. We're just thrilled to be part of this community to do this. I think Adam Koppel is here as well, the, uh, another part of mine that just came back to me. Um, <laughs> that's why I'm a bad politician, you know. That, uh, mayor Walsh can rattle off 34 people that are here. <laughs> <laughs> and never miss a person. Uh, he, he's been incredible, uh, and incredible in, in terms of making this happen, working with Harvard. And I think this is a shining example of what we should do in the rest of America. I'm very proud to be part of this team. Judy and I are proud to be part of this team to make this happen. Appreciate you all coming, and I think the next step is to go over and see the facility again. Yeah. So thank you very much. Thank you for coming. This concludes the speaking portion of the program. The reception will continue here, but it's dry outside. We encourage everybody to join us uh, next door for the ribbon cutting ceremony. And self-guided tours will be available after the photos are taken next door. So uh, join us next door.